happy last Wednesday, not of 2020, but happy last Wednesday of our regularly scheduled Wednesday meetings. Big hello from me in the tree <laughs> to you, wherever you are in the world. Uh, I know some people already dropped their locations in the chat, but if you haven't, let us know where you're from or where you're coming in from today. I'm coming in from Florida, hence all the sea creatures on the tree behind me. But I am really excited for this last coffee meeting because I think we might have saved the best for last. I have my friend Kate here and she is going to blow you away with all of her tried and true methods to get us organized and basically not a disaster. So I think we could all use some of that. I wish she could use that trick on 2020. I don't know why she held out on us on cleaning up 2020, but we are going to go into 2021 with a clean slate. The, the nickname she goes about on the streets is the Marie Kondo of business. So I think we all need a little tidying up. I know I do because I want to start 2021 on a good note. So big hi to Trevor and Josh and David and Nick and Jen and Kate and everybody for joining us. But please, please, please maybe throw some little thumbs up sees or hearts in the chat so that you can help me welcome Kate. Hello, hello. How are you? Good, how are you, Kim? I also, this is so embarrassing to admit, it's maybe 20 degrees outside here in North Carolina and I still have iced coffee. I I don't know what's wrong with me. I also have a firm belief that hot coffee and iced coffee are two different drinks, so. They're definitely two different drinks, but I also feel if it's warm inside the house, then the iced coffee is totally allowed. If you're drinking iced coffee outside, we might have to like throw the red flag. Be a little crazy. That's so true. I think I'm originally from Louisiana, so I think I just naturally always think it's warm outside and that's just not the case. So. It's uh, definitely not the case. And I saw some people are getting a snowstorm, our Northeast friends. Yeah. So yeah. maybe maybe time to pull out the iced coffee because you're going to make the house really, really hot. <laughs> exactly. One of those locations. I like that logic. Yeah. I'm going with it. I'm going with it. Um, well, I'm so excited you're here today and I feel like we are going to learn so much from you. So first and foremost, thank you. Um, I love the title of Marie Kondo for business. And I'm curious if that is something that you started or if somebody assigned that to you. It's so funny because it's not something I started at all. I actually didn't know who Marie Kondo was when I was like starting my business a while ago, had no idea. And then once the like Netflix series came out and everyone was kind of learning about tidying up, they were like, this is kind of what you do for business. I feel like you're sparking joy in our business or like making us get rid of stuff that doesn't spark joy. And so that kind of became the tagline from like clients, friends and colleagues. And it's like the best comparison ever because I just want people to feel joyful in their business and I want them to feel really like organized and tidy. Um, and so it's the perfect comparison and I'm always flattered when people say that, so. Well, I just feel like then it's a matter of time before you need a Netflix show. I mean, I've been calling, emailing. I don't know what, if anyone here, anyone in the comments has a Netflix connect, right. know that I'm, I'm up for it. Uh, I'm, I'm totally down. I, I love this idea of having an entire business revolved around organizing. And I like, I follow the home edit on Instagram, obviously Marie Kondo is kind of blown up, but it's, it's sort of a, a very niche, area because it's, it's, it's like cleaning, but organizing, like, how did you discover like, okay, this is what I want my niche to be. Yeah. That's such a great question. And it really came out of what I think so many of us have our ideas born out of our own needs and the things that we kind of need ourselves. And so I started a career coaching business now eight years ago and had no idea how to run a business at the time. You know, I was just trying to like phosphate my way through it, had like no idea, thought if I read enough like Forbes articles, I would I would make it. Um, and ultimately I did, you know, I, I got to a point in my business where like from the outside, financially we were successful, we had great clients, we were getting press, but inside it was a hot mess express. It was like, you know, just 
documents everywhere, couldn't take a break, like things that should have taken 20 minutes took all day because we didn't know where things were. We were communicating with clients on Instagram, on you know Facebook Messenger, on LinkedIn, on email. And so it was completely chaotic. And I got to a point where I was like, I can't operate like this anymore. I can't run a business like this anymore. I truly, it was like, if we're comparing like Marie Kondo now, it was like extreme hoarders situation right. in my business previously. And I think a lot of business owners can relate to that. You know, we watch a webinar or we hear about a new software platform. And so we try it, we log in, all of a sudden we have 80 subscriptions. We have documents everywhere. Some of them are in Dropbox, some are in Google Drive. We have no idea how we're keeping track of tasks. And that's what makes our business go from like fun and joyful to like overwhelming and stressful and being burnt out. And so once I hit that burnout for myself, I was like, I have to figure out how to tidy this up. I have to figure out how to organize a business in a way that works for me instead of the other way around. And so as I was figuring these things out, it took everything inside of me not to share. Like I knew too many business owners around me where I was like, hey, did you all know about this? And you could organize it this way. And like this can totally like streamline this part of your business to the point where my mentor looked at me and was like, I think you're more excited about this than your actual business now. And so I ended up selling my original career coaching business to my founder and then went full time into, you know, this business system strategy and streamlining because it really is the thing I'm so passionate about because it allows all of my clients to do the thing they're passionate about, which I love. And so it really was just born out of my own need of like <laughs> desperation, hoarder business mode of like, I can't keep existing like this. Well, it sounds like, you know, to, to Jen's point, like the hot mess express did not spark joy in your life. Really? Like the dumpster fire that was your business was not something that you were excited about. Not at all. And that's the biggest bummer I see, especially for so many, you know, creative, passionate, ambitious business owners. They get into their business thinking like, I'm doing the thing I love. I'm going to love it every day. And we start doing so much less of the thing we love and so much more operational administrative tasks that ultimately just weigh us down. And I think there's a stat like if less than 60% of your work is the stuff that you're truly passionate about, you're going to start to resent your work as a whole. And so ultimately, that's what so many of my now clients and like friends and colleagues at the time were dealing with where they were like, I'm done with my business, not because they weren't passionate about it, but because the thing that they were passionate about in their business was maybe 10% of the stuff they were doing. The rest of it was invoicing, emailing, doing all of the minutia that we have to do to keep our businesses running. Well, and I feel like so much of this mindset really, yes, definitely true for entrepreneurs and founders, but also true for people who work in corporate. Like I, so my, I had corporate experience for like three years and then I went to entrepreneurship and I found that kind of like the, I don't, I don't call them dirty habits, but like the non-organizational, non-essential habits followed me like a bad habit right from corporate straight into entrepreneurship. And so I really feel like that kind of the, the mindset that you teach or like these um, focused areas could work. If you were a stay at home mom, I feel like this sort of could work for you because you're really, I think more teaching people a framework of how to think about your time and how to utilize it. But, you know, I know you focus specifically on entrepreneurs and, and founders. And so I've been listening to a lot of podcasts that you've done recently. And I, I have to bring this up because I thought it was so perfect. And for any uh, females who are joining us for coffee, maybe drop in the chat if, if, you've, if you're going to resonate with this, because I did. We have to talk about your dump the purse out strategy. Like I heard you say that. I was like, oh, that's me. My purse has like a ham sandwich in it. What happened? Absolutely. Can you and talk about that, like, please, because people are probably like, what's she talking about? It's like my ultimate analogy. And, you know, I think men also, they have briefcases, they have backpacks, they can, you know, relate right. to the analogy. But essentially, the analogy is when we first get like a new purse or backpack, we just have like our laptop, our wallet, our phone, we have the essentials, it's looking cute, we're ready to go, we're feeling very confident and good with our new bag. Fast forward three months, we have like glitter, like, you know, our boyfriend's cologne, we have concert tickets, we have like that flyer that was on our car that we just shoved in our purse. And all the hair ties, yes. always hair ties, pins, the amount of pins, I don't understand, like I deserve a sponsorship, like it is unreal, the amount of pins. 
And we have so many things that we can't even find the things we actually need. And I know we've all had that moment either at like TSA or like we're checking out at the grocery store and we're like digging and we're like, I swear it's here. And we're like in the line for 40 minutes because we can't find the thing that like this one thing is supposed to hold. And so that happens in our businesses as well. You know, we start off, we're like, all right, we've got like our accounting software, our CRM, we're good. Next thing you know, 20 webinars later, we have 80 subscriptions we're checking every day. And by the time it hits 4 p.m. every day, all we've done is hopped from software to software or social media to social media. And the same thing to your point, stay at home moms, you know, career corporate employees, we all deal with this where we're, we think we're making things more efficient or we think we're adding things that are ultimately going to help or be beneficial. But ultimately, it just becomes chaos. And we're so overwhelmed by this sheer amount of things that we are checking or commenting on or needing to do that ultimately we don't get anything done and so ultimately the exercise i have my clients do and really my friends do like my mom just did it with like her own life she's you know stays at home and she just did it with her own life she was like i just need to like get some stuff down on paper and like really understand where my priorities are and so the purse dump is like dumping everything out like you would in your business so every task you have everything you do throughout the day dumping it out onto a piece of paper and saying what's essential what's revenue generating what's my priority and organizing it in a way so we can really understand where we need to be spending our time and just get rid of the rest well and because you talk so much about like what's i think it was like essential versus a life ad i'm probably messing up those terms that you use yeah so basically like what is essential what what do we have to do right. and I make a distinction between like urgent and important. So like there's yeah. things that feel like we have to do them because it's like coming up. So I know Christmas, especially is a time where we're like, we have to hurry and finish these things. And so often I'll like pause my clients and I'm like, what happens if we don't do that? Or what happens if this isn't a priority? So like one thing, you know, if you're anyone who um, is like sending out Christmas cards, like, oh, we have to do this by a certain time. or like, this has to get done. Or Minor New Year's cards. Yeah, I, I gave up on Christmas long ago. I'm like, that, that happened three years ago where I just, I knew myself and I was like, it's happy new year. Yes. So it's exactly. happy. Or it's like, what's going to happen if we don't send out Christmas cards this year? Like, is there going to be like, are we going to get a letter from like the president that's saying like, we're no longer allowed to exist? Like, no, like that, like, there are some things in our life that have to get done. They're important for certain reasons. And there's some things that we have just decided or assumed or we should be doing them. And so they become these urgent tasks when really it's making us miserable, overwhelmed or stressed. And it's like, I would so much rather not get a Christmas card from you and you just be like happy for a day. than you'd be like stressing, like trying to like drag the kids and get the photos, like pick the right, like layout font and ultimately do this thing that like is lovely. But if we're stressed and overwhelmed, probably isn't the first thing we need to add to our list. And so it's kind of a hierarchy of needs in that way, where it's like, if we're feeling like we've got everything under control, like I joke that it's like the Reese Witherspoon of like the holiday season. Like, you know, if we, if we feel like we've like got everything tied in a bow, for sure, do the things that feel like extra and exciting. But if we're already feeling underwater and overwhelmed, why are we adding more things just because we feel like we should be doing them? Well, and I feel like that's true for Instagram posts or Reels content or TikTok. It, uh, you know, one point that I love that you really focus on is what is revenue generating, not what you should be doing. And I think that's such a great point because I, I'm guilty of it for sure. I find myself spending time on things, you know, Pinterest. I've gotten zero leads from Pinterest, but, but sometimes I'll find myself down a rabbit hole of like, creating pins and it's like well, why am i doing this and and i think it's because you that that's sort of like keeping up with the joneses of like well i see kate doing it and i see jess ekstrom doing it so like i should be doing it but i don't have your business and i don't have jess's business so what makes sense for you doesn't necessarily make sense for me totally and so much of it is we don't see the behind the scenes of so many businesses and we have no idea how they're operating for example so many of my clients the reason why they're even allowed to have more than one like Instagram or Facebook or whatever account is because like an assistant's running one or they've scheduled all their posts or they're repurposing things. And so they're maybe not spending all of that time on social media. So we should ourselves to death. We're like, oh, we should be able to do it. Look, she's doing it. She's doing it. We should be able to do this. And it's like, 
we actually have no idea how that's going behind the scenes. And I know for me, like when reels first came out, people were like, Oh, you're like posting so many reels. I'm like, I'm actually not like, this is all content that's being repurposed from somewhere else. I haven't even like thought about or like really heard of reels. This is just something my assistant's doing. And so it's a totally different way of operating than someone who's maybe like just starting out feeling the pressure to do all of these things. When really, again, when we talk about that hierarchy of needs, it's like, let's be profitable first or let's do the things we have to do to like keep going. And then if we have some extra time or if we're feeling called to do it, let's add on an Instagram account, but don't do it by and, and sacrifice that thing that ultimately we really need to do. Well, and I feel like Rachel just made such a good point when she was talking about like the systems that she uses, because accounting is one of those things that I've realized that I need to keep a tight grip on. So I try to outsource, I try to follow your rules as much as I can and, and, and outsource as much as I can, but that there are certain things like legal, like I really have to be in there talking to my lawyers, same with accountant taxes. You know, is there something that people maybe aren't thinking of or clients that you've seen that they've been able to give away that they were initially like, Ooh, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can give this away just yet. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that's actually the continuation of like my purse dump model is like, I go through three, these three steps. The first is like to get rid of everything that's not essential or revenue generating. So obviously like accounting and legal, maybe it's not revenue generating, but it is essential. You can't have a business without it. So with those things, we kind of go through three steps. The first is to try and automate it. So can a robot do this thing? Like, is there a software platform? Is there something that can be done where no one, I don't have to hire for it. I can just have a system do it. So like a great example, if you're someone who's trying to like organize your receipts, HubDoc is an amazing software platform where you can auto forward like any of your receipts. You can take pictures of your bills and they get stored and filed in a really lovely way. So that's an example of like automating that, for example. If it's something like your taxes, like I don't want that automated. <laughs> I want an actual person. I want a human being to be looking at these things, but it's not my zone of genius or my kind of checkpoints are like, do I hate it? Do I not have the skill set for it? Or is it just not worth my time? Those are kind of my like three metrics to see if I should out for something. So if it's one of those three, even if I just don't like it, I'll be like, okay, maybe this is something that needs to move off my plate. So I'll start looking for people who can maybe help me. If it's something that you have to do, like only you can do it and ultimately like you can't have a software do it, then I really turn to what I call batching. So I'll set like certain days as like my CEO days. Even if you're a full-time employee, I think you should have CEO days, like no question. If it's like a Sunday afternoon and it's like, okay, what are the things that like I would dread all week or like worry about doing, like I'm just gonna put the timer on, head down for an hour and do those things. And that way it's kind of like laundry. It's like, if I know I'm doing laundry on Sunday, I don't worry about it all week. But if I don't know when I'm going to do it, it just like stays on my head of like, oh, I have to do laundry, I have to do laundry, I have to do laundry. Same thing with our other like business and admin tasks. So I just schedule like a CEO day and I'm like, All right, I'm going to put my big girl pants on. I'm going to like, you know, crank the music. I'm going to put the timer on and do the things that actually need to get done. And so ultimately, if I can't automate it, can't outsource it, sometimes we just have to get it done. And I just batch all the things I hate doing just so it's not lingering around. Do you ever bribe yourself? Like sometimes I will literally say, you can have a cupcake if you do this, Kim. I don't, I don't know if at 35 years old, that's a good skill, but I'm mastering it, I think. Absolutely. It's like, I don't know if anyone here watches 30 Rock, but it was like Liz Lemon would joke that she would like make popcorn for herself. And she was like, and then it's like a little treat, like at the end of my task, it's like, Yes. And it's like schedule it so that you can have that treat. Like, let's say it's like you always want to get like a certain like a frosty or like whatever it is, like make it something you're going to look forward to every week. So it's like once I do this thing, then I can go get my treat or reward. I am absolutely not above bribing myself, bribing other people. However, it gets done. If it gets my taxes to Uncle Sam, then like, let's let's have a frosty. Let's do it. If you if you catch yourself like, so I know these things that you're talking about, like, I know them, but you know, sometimes I get down the internet rabbit hole and I click, click, click and oh, Kate has a new webinar. And then I'm watching the webinar. Like if you catch yourself, like you have a moment of self-actualization where you're like, oh, I have spent 40 minutes on Pinterest and this doesn't matter. How, 
How do we un get ourselves out of that? Mm -hmm. I am a big believer that like willpower doesn't work. Like if I just like am relying on my willpower, then I'm probably going to stay on Pinterest and TikTok for like the whole day. And so I have to know my triggers kind of beforehand. It's like eating before you go to the grocery store. It's like if I don't do that, then like I am going to like get all the chips and cookies that I want. Same thing with like if I know I have a week where like I need to be focused and I have a tendency to like see someone post on Instagram and then spend three hours there, I'll delete the app for the week. Or like I'll delete, like I'll like get rid of it. Not like delete my account, but just like get rid of the app. Or this is something that's huge that I don't think people talk about enough that I think is so important. If you have like a certain person you're always like comparing yourself to or like what is she doing? I should be doing what she's doing. I'm giving you permission to unfollow them for like 90 days. And like come back to it if you feel differently about it or like come back to it when you're in a season where you're like feeling really good or like you have like a vision or like you've mapped out the things you're going to do. But so often these things that are totally optional, like following people, having Instagram, you know, like having Netflix on your smart TV, all of it's optional. Like delete the stuff that's keeping you from making progress on the things you want to do because human nature, like we can't just rely on ourselves to not check the phone if we're constantly getting the notifications or if we see that email pop up from that person we're really jealous of or that we think is a competitor, we're going to read it. We're going to go look at our website. And so it's like, and I tell people to do this even with me. I'm like, if I'm like triggering you because I'm at a different stage, like take yeah. a new day break from me, come back when you feel like you got your plan together and like go in. And I've done that with people that I've paid like honestly the most money to. Like I'll just like get a little bit triggered and I'm like, oh, like, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole comparing my website to hers. I'm just going to like not follow her for a while, come back and I've got my stuff done. So I feel much better about consuming that content. Well, and I feel like I never deleted Instagram. I know Jeff was like, Oh my God, Kim. Yeah. I made a face at that. I was like, Holy cow. But I, I do agree with Andrew. I watched the social dilemma. Is that what it's called? The social dilemma, that new one on Netflix. Anyways, I watched it and then I was like, Oh, the, you know, the internet's trying to, uh, you know, take all of our data and scare us. So I did set time limits on my Instagram. Sometimes I ignore those time limits. I'm not going to lie, but, but, but at least they're there. I thought that was a good step. That is a really good step. And I think a lot of us make progress that way. Like I'm a big believer of like the Pomodoro method. If people are familiar with that, of like 25 no. minutes on five minutes off. So basically it's like, if I have something to do, I'll spend 25 minutes doing my focused work. I'll take a five minute break, 25, five, 25, five. That way I feel like I'm making progress in those spurts and I have like a little treat to look forward to, but ultimately like I have parameters around how I'm going to be spending my time. And so things like that are even like time blocking where it's like, if I'm going to have a CEO day. Maybe I have like an Instagram scroll day and like half the day on Wednesday, I scroll through Instagram. I catch up. I see what's good. Like, that's a totally fine thing to do too, especially if you know that that's something that you need to kind of recharge or you're just like constantly curious, whatever you know you need to do, even if it's not productive or efficient, schedule time for it because it's something that's clearly important to you. I have never heard of that method, but I am definitely going to Google it. Yeah, the Pomodoro, more, Pomodoro method is lovely. If you Google it, there's a video on YouTube that like explains it really quickly. Um, it's a great method. Highly recommend it. Okay. What it, so obviously you have a ton of clients and you work with a ton of business owners and you work with a ton of founders. What, without revealing names, because we don't want to out anybody, but what's like a common mistake that you see a lot of your clients, and they don't have to be present clients, maybe they're past clients, but like, what's a common mistake that you keep seeing over and over and over again? Yeah. I think a common mistake I see is people think that having a software platform is the same as having a system. So what I mean by that is people will download a project management system or like an accounting system. And then like, because they downloaded it, they think there's some like magic that's happening where it's just like running in the background when ultimately like you have to put information into it or you have to like maintain it in order for it to be helpful. So it's kind of like getting an Instagram account, posting on it twice and then being like, Instagram working and it's like, no, that's not how it works. And so, so often when my clients strive to get organized and they have like a planner or like, you know, whether it's paper like this, whether it's an app, they get really excited about it. 
once they've downloaded it, something in their mind lets them know that they're like, oh, I've, I've done the thing that I need to do. And then they kind of check out. But then obviously you haven't put information into it. You haven't been maintaining it. So it's not helping you. If you don't actually write your tasks in the calendar or in the agenda planner, you're not going to remember to do them. And so it's like taking the step further and then putting a system together of like, when am I going to put tasks in here? When am I going to check it? Who else needs to be a part of this? And that's the mistake I see so often is we think just because we have the software platforms, the system is going to be working. And really the platform is just a way to help you create that system or build that system. So I see it really often with like project management tools like Trello or Asana or ClickUp. You know, so many people use those apps. They're lovely and wonderful if you're actually using them, not if you just have it as an app on your phone, but you never go to it. I feel like you just hit the nail on the head and I'm curious what everybody else's is, but like my organizational challenge is exactly that is I get a little software happy. You know, it's like squirrel, squirrel. I'm like, Oh, a new one. And, and I watch the demo and there's a free 90 day trial and yeah. And mm -hmm. like you just described me basically. And it's really, I mean, I see it most often in like really high level CEOs, people operating at a high level, because you do have so many demands on your time. You do have so many things that can take you away from like keeping that organized thing organized. And that's why ultimately deciding like what needs to be outsourced or automated is so important because maybe it's a virtual assistant that you need. Maybe it's like an online business manager, someone who can help organize or manage those tasks with you and so until you get to that point yes we need to schedule some diligent ceo time and say like every sunday i'm going to put all my tasks in and it's going to remind me and i'm going to stay on top of it maybe 90 days in we say okay i've done this i have a system for it that's great i want someone else to come management manage it and remind me when i need to do things now we bring someone on board but ultimately again it all comes down to like scheduling that time to do the things we know we need to do but ultimately during the week we have so many other things we just don't think to do it and so we have to schedule that time and really honor it like it's a real meeting or you know task that we have to do uh, i mean i always say that the the number one person i cancel on the most is me <laughs> I'm, I'm awesome at canceling on myself but, what, but when there's somebody else, I'm like, oh, well, I have this call. I would never, you, most of the time, unless it's an emergency, cancel a call I have with somebody else. But if I've time blocked something for me, I'm like, oh, I'll move that. Totally. And, and it's so funny because it goes back to that urgent and important conversation where we feel like going like Christmas shopping or like, you know, folding the laundry feels like urgent because it's right there. But the important thing that's actually going to move the needle is that time for ourselves as a CEO, that four hour block we had that we see in our calendar. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, we have free time. We're going to like go do something else besides the thing that we scheduled that time to do. And then a year passes and we wonder like, how come I never wrote that book? Or like, how come I never like plan that YouTube series? How come that never happened? It's like, oh, all those blocks of time that you like looked over to like go full laundry is the reason why that's not happening. Well, I love this point that Jeff brought up in terms of trying to organize and talk about contacts, because I feel like that's also something is really scheduling, especially now that we're all work from home or remote or COVID or whatever the heck we're doing right now. Um, you have to like schedule time to make those connections because we're not all meeting in person anymore. How do you think about systemizing people or, or human connection? Totally. It sounds really sterile when we think about it. We're like, oh, I have a system or like a process for like connection. And that feels really icky. But it actually, when you have great systems, it does the opposite. And like, actually, my friend Dara and both, and Jess too is a great, they're both great examples of this where like they'll schedule time where it's like every Thursday morning or like every Sunday afternoon. I'm just going to like ping some of my favorite people with like relevant articles to them or like, things I need to talk to them about. And they'll actually keep it in like their, you know, project management system or CRM. In fact, I have some templates to do that. If you're someone who's interested in like organizing your contacts effectively that way, just DM me and let me know. Um, but essentially they'll like keep a spreadsheet of like, when's the last time I contacted this person? And like on Thursdays, like go through that sheet and like see who you need to reach out to. And it, again, like, in theory, it maybe sounds sterile, but actually it's probably the only way you as a busy person is going to make contact with them. And I told Dara, like, I would so much rather you 
reach out to me because of a reminder and us actually connect, then feel like you should be able to do it organically and we actually never get in contact. And so if someone's on the edge of their seat, AKA me literally right now being like, yes, everything you're talking about, yes, yes, yes. Like I need all of this. Like Kate, like I need help. What, like, what do people do or how do they kind of get into your systems? I watched your webinar, by the way. So I would say if anybody hasn't watched the webinar, here's a shameless plug for the webinar. Thank you. Yes. And the great thing about the webinar too, is I'm like, you can, whatever systems you have now or like processes you have now, I'm all about integration instead of like totally starting over. So if you're like, oh, I don't want to abandon the systems I have now, you can use the tools you really like. The method is the thing that I really care about, but ultimately the easiest way and the easiest point of entry is my bundle that's called the Automate Your Business Bundle. Even if you're not a business owner, it's really like organizing your life. It's like the Marie Kondo first step. And I actually have these plug and play templates where it's like if it's networking, podcasting, client work, um, you know, there's so many different ones. Now there's so many areas of our life that we want to organize. I have over 12 templates in there for you to organize your contacts, your clients, the projects you want to work on, your annual goals, your quarterly goals, organizing it in one place so that you can kind of open it and know what you're supposed to work on every day. It is the system that I still use now five years later. And every three months, I'll like go and be like, does something need to be updated? And me and my virtual assistant laugh all the time. We're like, this still works really well. Um, so it's the Automate Your Business Bundle. I actually have it live on my website now if you want to go check it out. But those plug and play templates, it is truly plug and play. Like you download the file, you upload it to your project management system, and it's all beautiful there for you as a template. And it is the thing that, again, I still use all of my clients use, but right now we're just like giving it away for like an embarrassing price to be completely honest with you. Cause I think 2020 has rocked us. And I think it's a time when people just like need like some structure, organization, like feeling in control of things more than ever. So we were like, we're basically gonna give it away. Don't tell any of my clients who are paying a lot more for all of this. Um, but we're basically, you know, giving it away. We have a tutorial showing you how we use it but it is a game changer in the software that I literally go into every day that like tells me what to do. It's my second brain. Well, and I feel like you're kind of the queen of software. Like I know just from obviously following you on social media, but also listening to some podcasts you've been on and, and you mentioned one uh, today, the hub doc, I think it was, but whether it's Asana or which I know is something that you use a lot, or I'm going to mess this up and I keep calling it dubstep, but it's not <laughs> dubstep. It's dub, dub a doc. Yeah. Yes. Wait, what is it again? Dubsado. Dubsado. I don't know why I get dubsado. It's a very simple name for a very simple system. It's like, I don't know what we were trying to accomplish there, but. I don't know either, but it seems like you obviously not only use and, and utilize software in an interesting way, but you also just know about a lot of software. So I'm just kind of personally curious, how do you either hear about this software? Do people message you like, Hey, Kate, check out this new thing. Or, or is there a newsletter you follow? Or like, how, how do you kind of get the inside scoop on all of this? Stuff? I've never heard of half these things. Yeah, that's such a great question. And if anyone like wants to put together a newsletter and like do that hard work, like I think you, you're sitting on a million dollar idea because a lot of system strategists like myself are like looking for a newsletter like that. But a lot of it is either organic people reach out. I hear a third party or I'm completely honest with you. And like, I'm a total nerd. And so I'll geek out on like G2.com or like these places where they're doing a lot of comparison charts of like different types of software. And I'll spend, this is the most embarrassing thing I've probably ever confessed, like in a public conversation, but like I'll spend my Saturday being like, okay, we're comparing like honey, like honey book and Dubsado. Like that's what we're going to look at today. What's the difference? Oh, this one accepts ACH payments. This one doesn't like, total nerd that's the benefit of hiring like a system strategist in my opinion is they've done that deep digging and if they're a good system strategist they've said like how much like you know are you processing in revenue every month is this better is this better like how many times are you emailing a month is this better is this better someone who's really like dug in and done that work but so much of it is like my organic work and i think that goes back to like valuing ourselves and valuing our work and like really thinking about like the non-billable hours we put into our work and for me that's a huge part of it is saying like 
you know, about once a month, is there a major new email marketing platform that's like on the market that I need to check out? Oftentimes there is, and I'm constantly kind of rifling through and seeing what's best. And I also love to dispel the myth that there's like a best software out there. I think so often we think like, oh, what's the best email marketing platform? What's the best CRM? And there's not one. There's one that's best for you and the things that you need it to do. And so ultimately, the answer is always customized of like what's the best. There's just a best for you. And that's where that research really comes into play and is really important. Well, and I think a lot of even just the systems and stuff you're talking about, it also is a best for you. You know, what works for you is not going to work for me and, and vice versa. But I'm curious, you know, one thing I think you were talking about earlier with comparing yourself to kind of other people or, or maybe aspirational people that you follow online. And one thing I always like, I'm curious to ask successful business owners like you is, like what is behind the curtain? Like, do you have, you, you mentioned a virtual assistant. Are there other people helping you? Cause I think sometimes what we don't talk about as um, business owners or entrepreneurs is that we do have help. So then you think to yourself, if I'm over here, how can I not keep up with the Joneses? And you don't realize that they have 10 people helping them. So do you have multiple people that are helping you on like a day-to-day -day basis? Absolutely. In fact, I don't think I could run a, a quarter of the business I run on my own. I just think it would be like physically impossible. That's why I'm so vocal about outsourcing. Like, I just don't know how I'd be able to do it. And so for me, the rule I have for myself is if something is sitting on my to-do list or I'm thinking about it for more than 90 days, I have to outsource it. I haven't done it. There's a reason I haven't done it. And so I have to outsource it. So I have a Facebook ads manager. I have a Pinterest ads manager. I have a virtual assistant. I have an online business manager because there were things on my list, whether it was like, you know, organizing the email or like editing the course that I have or like, you know, frankly, doing like subtitles for videos, like things where it's like, I'm just not going to do that. So if I'm not going to do it, I need to invest in someone to help me. But the other myth I think so many business owners have is like, I have to have a full time salary ready for someone if I want to outsource. And that, especially in 2020, is so far from the case. You can go on outsourcing with love, you can go on Upwork, you can go on Fiverr and find people who want to help you do these small tasks in your business that you don't have time to do. And ultimately, it's a better ROI for you to pay someone else to do it, even if it's 20 bucks once a month and they do this one thing for you. And so don't fall victim to the myth that like, I have to be running this like multi-million dollar business in order to hire people to help me. You can start with a hundred dollars a month, get that help and build it up incrementally over time. Just get some of that stuff off your plate because there's no way to do it all. No, there's definitely not. It's something that one of my goals, I've several going into 2021, but, but one of my big ones is really kind of exactly what you said. What is sitting on my plate for more than 90 days? What can I start outsourcing? What can I start giving up? You know, I'm curious for you, you know, have you thought about, do you do goals or have you thought about your 2021 goals? And do you have any that you could share with us? Absolutely. So, I mean, Every year for me, I set a client goal. So how many clients I want to work with. I set a revenue goal and I set a marketing goal. So like whether that's like, for example, this is maybe like embarrassing to admit too, but I like fallen in love with TikTok. I love being on TikTok. I know that's so embarrassing, especially for some of it. But I got on it during quarantine because I was just like curious. And then all of a sudden I'm like, you know, drawn in. And so now I have this marketing goal of like, I want to, um, you know, get 60% of my revenue from TikTok. Like I want it to come from that place. So I really need to double down on like making sure that I'm promoting there. And I am like designing products specifically for that platform, getting these, you know, new budgeting entrepreneurs who are like a lot of them in their early twenties, you know, introduced to my brand and introduced to my platform. And so that was a critical decision we made in our goals. And I like having those three because I think so often we'll focus just on a revenue goal or we'll focus just on putting a bunch of clients and kind of skews how we organize things. And so I think like a client goal, a marketing goal and a financial goal are great places to start and really allow you to not just focus on one area of your business and kind of forget about those other things, but I also break them down quarterly. That way if something changes first quarter or like we saw with the pandemic, like obviously 
major things change. So if like you had a goal of like hosting a certain number of events or speaking at a certain number of conferences, that might have gone out the window. So break it out quarterly so that let's say we get into the next quarter, something's not happening or maybe events are back up and running. We can adjust and tweak as the year goes on. And so I set kind of these like overarching goals for myself for the year but then i like to break them down quarterly because like let's say something like a pandemic happens i can kind of adjust without feeling like i've totally failed on that goal no it's i haven't thought about bringing my goals that way but that's a really good point and that way they can shift i like that and i also i love dinesh's question that he just threw in here about picking the right person and how to outsource that. So I'm curious where, you know, these people that you mentioned, your ad, your Facebook ads manager, how did, did you use these websites to find people or were they references of like friends of friends? That's a great question. So I exclusively use Fiverr and Upwork for like what I call like my mindless tasks. So mm -hmm. if I need someone to like translate a video, I'll go to Upwork and Fiverr and find a good price because it's something that like can be pretty dummy proof. If it's someone I'm bringing on my team as like a virtual assistant or like a Facebook ads manager, Vanessa's is completely right. Like I want someone who has like a real skill for this right task. And so I'll actually go on platforms like LinkedIn or Instagram and search the words like Facebook ads manager or search the words Instagram ads manager. You'll be amazed. Some of the best in the business are the people that are most active on Instagram. It's because they like, you know, they take their business really seriously. I'm not hiring you to do Instagram ads for me if you have six posts on Instagram. Like I want to see that you like, you know, know how to do the thing that you're wanting to do. Same thing for virtual assistants. If I'm hiring you to like write copy for my social media. I want to see the copy you've written for your own social media. I want to see this like proof that you know how to do what you're doing. And so I'll go to these platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, search those keywords. And that's actually how I've found a lot of my current hires. Um, I also love a website called Outsourcing with Love. I joke that it's like match.com for um, <laughs> for like contractors. So you can go there and kind of sort for what you're looking for, just like on like a dating app. And they have people organized by like, are they system strategists? Are they virtual assistants? Are they graphic designers? Are they web designers? They have them organized and they have portfolios. They have um, testimonials, recommendations. And so platforms like that are um, a little less saturated than Fiverr and Upwork. But if you're looking to get something mindless done for cheap, I will still use Fiverr and Upwork for those things. But if I'm bringing someone in to work with me on a daily basis, I want to get to know them a little bit deeper than just like their profile on Fiverr or Upwork. So I'll find them on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, search those keywords and then start a conversation. But ultimately always want to make sure I have a sense for like, are they going to fit with my company culture? Do we like to communicate in the same way? And I actually, in my automate your business bundle, I have my hiring guide as well for like how I hire the people that I um, outsource to and what kind of like rules and regulations I put in place. Like for example, I have 90 day contracts, even with people I've been working with for six years. So every 90 days, either of us can like review the contract and say like, we don't want to do this anymore. We no longer want to work together. And I think it just keeps everyone really honest and like on their toes. Um, and so that's something that I've continued to implement that I absolutely love that allows us to both both kind of feel that autonomy, but also hold each other accountable to make sure that we're still enjoying working together. So there's things like that, that I have in that guide that I still do to this day and they've served me really well. And that's in the bundle that's on your website. Yeah. So, I mean, that bundle is like, I truly feel like we're giving it away. It's like embarrassing, like my hiring guide, all my Zapier integrations. So like all the like true automation I use in my business, all of my canned templates, kind of how I think about running my business from like a high level. Um, so it's got all of that in there. Sounds like a good Christmas gift. I or Hanukkah. Know. Is tonight the last night of Hanukkah? I think it is. I think it is. So if anyone needs a last minute Hanukkah gift. I'm telling you, and like I've had um, like multiple partners of like business owners reach out and they're like, I wanna buy your services like for my significant other. If you know a business owner or just someone who needs to get organized, like that to me is a useful gift. I always want useful gifts. Like what is this person actually going to use? We're not going to use the candle. We're not going to use like all the things we thought this person wanted. It's just going to like sit in the corner and collect dust. These are the things that ultimately are like so helpful, especially if you knew someone like me eight years ago where it's like I started a business with like a lot of excitement, but like no clue what I was doing. 
those are the best people to like. Or, you know, even if you're really experienced and you want to organize, it can help both people. I feel like I feel like there's a marketing idea in like the next holiday season, like best gift for the hot mess express friend in your life. Like we there's there's a slogan there. I don't know. We had to workshop that a bit. And I think this year, more than any other year, maybe like a lot of us are feeling like we're in that hot mess express camp. Even if you've been really organized in the past, sometimes things have just like gotten away from us. It's a really good reset. And yeah, Jeff's right. I'm like, it's embarrassing how low the price is for like what it is. Do not, if you know any of my current clients, like please do not let them know because they would shame me. And <laughs> Mum's the word. Um, and and yeah, tomorrow is the last day of Hanukkah. So I think that, that this could be a perfect gift for that hot mess friend in your life. It's <laughs> really good, like selling point. Um, oh, I love that. Uh, well, I am so excited because I have been so amped up on these like speed round questions for you because I feel like you have such nuggets of gold that I'm like, she's going to smash this part of the interview. Like she's just, she's gonna kill it. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee, let's go. Are you ready? Okay, what have you started using lately or doing lately, so either using or doing, that you love, you're obsessed with? It's like your new favorite thing. Again, it's so embarrassing, but like TikTok is the thing that I am beyond. I mean, it is truly embarrassing. Like ask my husband. He's like, we cannot tell people that you are so obsessed with TikTok. I am obsessed. Even if you think like it's for teeny boppers that dance, there are teeny boppers that dance on there. There's like great mom advice, great, like all kinds of really good advice on there. And I'm obsessed. Another side one is actually HubDoc is one that come tax time, I'm always so thankful that I'm using. It organizes your receipts, not just by vendor, but also amount and date. So like it gets real organized in there and it is a dream. Does that integrate with your credit card? It does. Yeah. So you can have them automatically integrate. And then also you can give access to your accountant so they can be like a guest on your account. So they can like see all of your receipts, manage things like that part of my business. I went from feeling like so much anxiety about taxes and receipts and like money and accounting to like in a very short amount of time feeling like no stress, like no craziness around it. And it's like 20 bucks a month. It's like, mm -hmm. it's kind of golden. Okay, if you can get in a time machine and like go back in time to when you first, first, first were starting your business and it can be the work while with Kate business or um, I think it's me, me, I always pronounce it wrong, Maven Lee. Yeah, Maven Lee. Yeah. Maven Lee. Um, what would you do differently or like what pothole would you avoid? I think the biggest pothole I would avoid is thinking that in the beginning I had to do it all myself and I had to like figure everything out myself before I had the luxury of getting help. I think there's this real, I believe in like seasons of hustle. I think like there are seasons when I'm like grinding, like hustling and then seasons of rest you can't have seasons if you're the only person helping you or supporting you. So again, even if it's like automation or outsourcing, whatever it is, find out what can help you and invest in that. The $20 you spend on that is so much more valuable than like the time that you spend, the headaches, like all of the stuff that you think you have to do to make things work when ultimately it's a terrible opportunity cost and a terrible return on your investment. Okay, if you could then just get in your time machine and maybe only go a little bit like the beginning of 2020, see, and you can't undo the pandemic, so that's happening no matter what. But in business, what would you what would you have done differently this year? I know this probably sounds really crazy too, but I would say no to more clients. Like, and I know that sounds like super crazy. Like people are like, what? Like, don't leave money on the table, like whatever it is. But it's one of those things, like I'm a big believer of like less stuff, better stuff, like yeah. really focus in on like serving like six clients really well and allowing myself to like be good with that. Um, it's funny. I was kind of the opposite of most people in the pandemic, like most people in the pandemic at the beginning of it work really slowed down. They're like baking banana bread. They're like having some time off. That was the time when so many people were like, oh, I have time to work on my system. So like 
like the rush, like crazy amount of people in my inbox signing up, which like in the moment you're like, this is great. But ultimately like led to like some stress on my part of like, we're taking on a lot of people. This is great, but I want to make sure I can really deliver to everyone. So it was a great lesson of like less stuff, better stuff, work with a few people, keep that wait list if you need to without feeling the urgency of having to help everyone at all at once. Uh, well, I did not pay Dinesh, but this is a great setup as we talk about gifting. One, I'm glad you got that for yourself because that is a great gift. But Kate, what's the best gift that you've given yourself in the last year that's not your own business bundle? That is a great one that like, honestly, I kind of did give it to myself before I made it public. I like, you know, had like, I created it for myself and that's why I find it useful for others. But the greatest gift I gave myself, I've always for a long time had a virtual assistant, which I love, but I gave myself an online business manager, which is kind of like someone that takes on more. I have some courses, I have some other products that I just wanted someone to manage like customer service, some other stuff. And it was something that, again, I would like should myself to death. Like I should be able to answer everyone's questions. I should be able to like do this stuff. Like, and it got to a point where I was like, this is like no one, like Dinesh isn't going to care if I'm the person that tells him that the video is like on YouTube or not. Like he just wants the information and needs it. And so I gave myself the gift of like, I'm having an online business um, manager, feeling really good about that. And just allowing myself to like invest in that, feel good about that and really step away in a way that I haven't, like I've had an assistant for a really long time, but I haven't had someone that's like managing my business for me. Like in the weeds. Yeah. No, I like that. What's the next thing that you're really excited or that you're hoping to learn? That is such a good question. The next thing I really want to learn, and this is actually something I'm in the process with and just hired someone to help teach it to me is going all in on like digital products that could help people. Um, I love that Dinesh said he would still care. I'll respond to your customer inquiries, Dinesh, but just you. Um, and so I have two friends that are really good at creating digital products and like in a really like scaled way. And so I have this bundle, but I want to do more. I want to have like a marketing bundle. I want to have a finance bundle. I want to like really give people all the tools that I use in some different areas of my business. But I want to do that in a really like scaled and thoughtful way. So like I want to learn a lot more about digital products, put some of the tools that I use in a digital project product format so that I can kind of spread them um, in, a, in a more scaled way. And I just know some experts that do that really well. And I want to learn best practices from them. I'm a big believer in like always be learning, always be growing, always be educating yourself. And so just hired two mentor mentors to do that. Well, I'll have a seat next to you in that school room anytime. Okay. Because that sounds like some good stuff to learn about. Totally. Yeah. And I think ultimately, especially in the pandemic, that's where I think things are moving. Like, let's be thoughtful about serving our clients, but also allowing our services to help more than just the people that we work with one-on-one, -on -one, allowing people to get access to some of our best tools without having to be a high ticket client that's paying us thousands of dollars. They can get started for a much lower ticket amount. And it's definitely something you like took the words out of my mouth because like, that's something that I could not agree more with in terms of 2021 and something that that's why I'm like, I want to do that too. I, I'm sitting here going, me too. Yeah. Me too. Me Come too. with me. Done. <laughs> we can sit next to each other like schoolgirls. That's it. We got the pens. We got the, we got the notebooks. We're we'll be good to go. It'll be great. Okay. Wh what is one thing that all of us should be doing this week? It could be something like, that we should try maybe something new that we should try this week could be food a book a tv show a breathing exercise i don't know but what should we all try and say kate made us do it yeah such a good question first thing is like if you haven't done the purse stump before if you haven't like physically written out that exercise do that like that will give you the most like mental calm mental clarity more than like watching Marie Kondo or like Queer Eye ever could for you. Like it is just like everything that's in your head, write it down on a sheet, um, decide what is essential, what's revenue generating, what your priorities are. Just like allow yourself to organize it. That's huge. The other thing that me and my husband are obsessed with right now is the show on HBO, The Undoing with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. 
It's just a guilty pleasure. It's not productive or efficient in any way, but it just will keep you on the edge of your toes. And it's a good distraction from life if you need one. I heard that that's good. Like several people have now said I have to. So that is on my list. I finished Queen's Gambit. So now I'm like, okay, now, yeah. we're, now I need to go on to the undoing. It's, it's, just, it's hard to keep up. It's honestly, I can't like when people are like, you know what movie is good? I'm like, I can't take any more recommendations at the moment. Like I'm good for one, maybe in a month. But right now I'm just like, I really liked the undoing. I'm going to like brag about that. But it just is one of those shows where it's like, you are like just sucked in at the end. There's a cliffhanger at the end of everything. Also really glad Dinesh said this because I think so often people think that I'm not a fan of like pen and paper. They think that I'm like not, I'm like, you have to go tech. You have to have all these systems and software. I have uh, the, the most like pads of paper ever on. I have mine. It's out of reach, but I have it too. It's like a different way, like actually in your brain, it's a different way of processing. And so it's amazing to both like get it down on paper and then I'll actually put it in my project management system after the amount of processing I'm able to do in between writing it on paper and putting it online is so important and has like contributed to so much of my success. So if you love writing on paper, if you're a pen and paper person, keep doing it and don't let anyone tell you that it's a bad way to do it. You do what's best for you. Don't allow anyone to tell you otherwise. I, I love me some paper. Oh, yeah. The love amount of I spend on paper products, unacceptable. Yeah. I, I apologize for nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Oh, Kate, you have been such a shining rock star of a light. And I feel like there's a lot of bundles that are going to get sold in the next 24 hours because everyone's going to be going, I need me a bundle. And I have a hot mess friend that also needs a bundle. So thank you for gifting us the bundles this holiday season. I couldn't be happier to do it. I truly feel like this is the type of gift that I would have loved five years ago. So it makes me thrilled. And if you have any questions, I'll actually tell Alexis to like send any like customer questions or anything for like the next week to me just so I can make sure we're really hands on because I know Kim cultivates an amazing community here. So if you have questions, DM me on Instagram or you can reach out to us via our support line and I will personally respond if you are from Kim's gang because I can tell this, these are my people. These are your people. We're, we're, we're a solid Wednesday crew, a solid wacky Wednesday crew. Um, so is that the best place that people should, people should follow you on Instagram? Instagram's the place where I hang out. TikTok is like, I'll put content, but I'm not like messaging people a ton there. Instagram is the place where I'm like, I'm there every day. If you need to get in touch with me, I'm on Instagram. Oh, I love it. Well, Kate, Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm about to follow you on TikTok momentarily. Um, so thank you so much. And and I just wanted to like give a big cheers from, from, from me to you and to everyone. Cheers to you. This is amazing. I am just so envious of the group you have here. This is awesome. I love it. Well, you'll have to come back in 2021 and join us again. Yes, absolutely. But Sending a big happy new year to everybody. Have a safe end of 2020 and I'll see you guys all in 2021. Mm -hmm.